Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about pareidolia. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about pareidolia. So what do this picture, this picture, and this picture all have in common? If you said, hey, they all have faces, congrats. That's exactly the topic of today's video. When you see an image or pattern in something that's supposed to be ambiguous or naturally occurring, that's pareidolia. A really common example is seeing faces in everyday objects, which is going to be what we talk about today. But there are some other really great examples, like seeing shapes in clouds or even hearing hidden patterns in music. So if you'd like to hear about some of those other kinds of pareidolias, let me know down in the comments below. Pareidolia has always been a major influence on human art and literature, but didn't really become a focus of psychological study until the age of projective testing. Rorschach first used his inkblot tests to explore the depths of the human psyche. And while the original concept for Rorschach's tests stemmed from a game, the basis of that game was pareidolia seeing familiar shapes and images in what's supposed to be an ambiguous shape. So what really causes pareidolia? One explanation comes from Gestalt psychology, particularly the principles of proximity and similarity. Basically, we are more likely to group things together when they have a similar detail in common. So for instance, in this image of what looks like a dog's face on an actual dog's ear, what our brain is doing is grouping those dark spots together into an arrangement that makes sense. This explanation really seems to work, especially when we try to dissect and change things to make spots less related. For instance, if we made these same dark spots on the dog's ear different colors, the pareidolia effect becomes less pronounced. Another explanation is that pareidolia could be caused by top-down processing. When our brain sees something tough to understand, we might try to make sense of it by filling in the gaps with information that we've already learned. So when we see things that vaguely resemble a face or an emoji, we fill in the blanks to make it look the way we think it should. This explanation also makes a lot of sense. Scientists have demonstrated over and over again that humans, especially infants and babies, have a strong preference for looking at human faces. So it makes sense that when we're trying to fill in the gaps with something, we would pick a shape that we're really familiar with, like a human face. But possibly the biggest proposed explanation for face pareidolia is that we might actually be primed to see faces. It could be that for our ancient ancestors, it was advantageous to be able to quickly perceive faces. For instance, say an ancient hunter-gatherer version of you is standing outside and off in the distant trees, you think you see the face of a large predator like a lion or a bear. If you recognize the face, as a face and run away, you are much more likely to survive, thrive, and reproduce than your buddy who didn't see the face and then got eaten by a tiger. If you'd like to see more of this face, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking and I'll see y'all later. Bye!
Did ancient hunter-gatherer you just let your buddy get eaten by a tiger? Dude!